Hello. Let me tell you about our four-year bachelor program in International Business in Asia. International Business in Asia gives you a general understanding of business administration and insight into the fundamentally different challenges businesses face when they work with Asian markets or companies. You learn about Asian politics, economics, business conditions and culture, and you develop Chinese or Japanese language skills. But what does that actually mean? Well, the big point is this. Asia is different. When, for example, a European company does business in Argentina, or when an Australian company does business in Canada, there are, of course, big differences in markets, regulations, economics and culture, which they must understand and adapt to. But there are also big similarities. In many ways, the fundamental factors that determine how you do business are the same. This is not the case when it comes to Asia. Again, Asia is different. And Asia is different in so many ways. Let me give you just a few examples. States and governments play a much more active role in determining business conditions in many Asian countries. In Asia, there are many huge business conglomerates that create unique industry structures and fundamentally reshape the conditions for competition. Management philosophies are often very different, and indeed, in many Asian countries, cultural norms and values are so fundamentally different that you really need to study them to understand them and to navigate through them. And on top of the cultural barriers, you have the language barriers, where most Asian languages have a structure and logic that is completely different to those of Western languages. On top of that, there is a simple matter of size. We talk a lot about China and the size and growth of its economy, but let's not forget Japan, Indonesia, India, South Korea, and other Asian countries that are huge in terms of their population, their economy, or indeed both. The role Asia plays in the global economy can hardly be overstated. Just think, for example, of the technology sector as, as one area where Asian industries are at the forefront. And it's not just the size thing we are talking about. We are also talking about how Asian countries, governments and economies are changing the fundamentals, the rule book, we might say, of how global business is carried out and what you need to understand and adapt to as an international or global company. To that, you could add other big picture perspectives, like the importance of the relations and conflicts between the US, Europe, China and Japan, and how they affect international trade and competition. Or you could mention the challenges of climate and sustainability, where, for example, the role of the big production industries in Asia is crucial for finding global solutions. Now, the themes I've mentioned are all examples of themes that you could very well work with in the International Business in Asia program. And let me emphasize that in the program you will work with both a general perspective on Asia, a specific perspective on Japan or China, depending on which language you choose, and also perspectives on other Asian countries. What then are the topics you will work with on international business in Asia? Well, for starters, you will receive a general introduction to business administration. You will learn about topics such as accounting, finance and marketing to give you an understanding of how companies are operated and managed. In addition to the general business courses, you will have courses that teach you about Asia and Asian business conditions. You will learn about topics such as economics, trade and investments. You will learn about how Asian companies and org industries are organized. You will learn about Asian markets and competition. And you will learn about Asia's role in global trade and the role governments and institutions play in shaping the playing field that foreign companies must understand when they do business in Asia. Then, of course, there is the language and culture part of the program. You'll study either Chinese or Japanese language, and in addition, you will learn about historical, societal, and cultural aspects of your language and language area.
Now, you won't learn to speak the language at a level where you can, for example, conduct business negotiations, but you will learn to speak it at an everyday conversational level. The point of the language studies is also very much that language skills open up a deeper understanding of the culture and allows you to access and understand information that would otherwise not be at your disposal. For most, learning an oriental language takes time and indeed the language element is the reason that IBA is a four-year program whereas the other CBS bachelor programs all take three years. In addition, you will learn about research methods that give you an understanding of how to use, create and evaluate knowledge in order to make business decisions based on actual knowledge rather than guesswork. The fourth of the eight semesters does not take place in Copenhagen. Rather, you will study that semester abroad in either Japan or a Chinese-speaking country. This allows you to gain practical intercultural experience and to immerse yourself deeper in your chosen language. On the seventh of the eight semesters, you study elective courses which you choose yourself. The seventh semester is also where you have the opportunity to go on exchange and study abroad at one of the 300 or so CBS partner universities. It could be in an Asian country, but it doesn't have to be. Most IBA students do choose to go on exchange, but you also have the choice of staying in Copenhagen and doing your electives at CBS. Now you know something about the aim of the International Business in Asia program, what you'll be working with and why. But what will the program demand of you? And what might it be a good idea to consider before you apply? Well, I'll tell you all about that in the second video.